part of Joe Perkins is now being played by Mark Arnold. Hey, Peter. Listen, man, I wanted to congratulate you on uh, saving Kelly. That was an extremely courageous thing you did. Well, I just did what anyone would have done. Hardly. Well, it wasn't bravery. Gut instinct, call it. You know, I think that's how courage ought to be measured. You know, by how we react to situations where we don't have time to think. And I also wanted to apologize to you, man. For what? Well, some of us uh, made some rather hasty judgments about you based on your past with Ginger and all that stuff. And it seems obvious you pulled yourself out of that life. And I just think you deserve a fair break from everyone. What's the matter? Uh, I just, you feeling okay? You want to sit down for a minute? No, I, I'm all right. Listen, man, you know, you came so close to getting killed, it might just be sinking in right now. You've got to give yourself uh, a few minutes just to take it easy. Peter? Peter. Uh, I want to thank you for what you did for my sister. There aren't many true heroes in the world, and I think what you did was really wonderful. Alive. He's still alive. All right. Well, you want a beer? Some wine? Kickapoo joy juice? You name it, this place will come up with it, right, Mr. Bartender? Uh-huh. Anything? Sure. How about some more milk for a quart of 10W40 motor oil? Hmm. Whatever turns you on. <laughs> Look, uh, what do you think would have happened if um, the power had stayed off for another three or four hours? I want some ice cream. First would have come my life story, the expurgated version. Vanilla ice cream. Ice cream. Vanilla ice cream. Well, you got it, lady. Uh, got kill him, it. kill him! Oh, <laughs> don't worry, I don't think he was talking about us. Yeah, we're trying to watch. Uh, game score is 28-24. He was talking to us. Well, are we going to sit here and listen to this, or shall we take this someplace else? No, I want some vanilla ice cream. Here. Whipped cream and a cherry on top? No, just plain. Hey, uh, pal, do you carry ice cream here? Yeah, 28-24. 28-24. No, no, look, I want a scoop of vanilla ice cream. Give me a scotch, straight up. Two spoons. I just have this craving. You're not pregnant, are you? I mean, we didn't do anything back there in that elevator that I forgot about, did we? I tell him, no whipped cream and no cherries. Yeah. Um, hey, pal, lay off the whipped cream and the cherries, okay? Hey, fella, food's next door. Man, did you see that hit? He almost took his head off. Hey, give me a beer with that, would you, huh? Hold the whipped cream. Huh? Yeah, right, smart guy. Y shut up. All right. <laughs> <laughs> You are a troublemaker, you no, know that? No, no, I'm innocent. <laughs> sure, you know, football, football addicts are generally not the nicest guys. Oh, so I see. Do you like football? Well, when I'm not on a date. Mm. You know something? Tonight was a lot of fun. But I sure vented a lot of stuff on you, didn't I? I'm glad that you trust me. Yeah, so uh, what's this sudden ice cream thing, huh? I don't know. I just had this desire for a cholesterol fix. Oh, you got good veins, do you? The best. Yeah, I know. Mm. I tell you what, after this, we'll go over to the Bijou Theater mm -hmm. and you'll find it. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, I think you got the wrong room. Wrong. What are you doing? It's okay. Joe? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, God, thank God you're all so worried about you. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. All right, I can't stay. I just had to see your face. You don't know what it was like knowing you were in danger and knowing I couldn't do anything. I'm all right now. You look wonderful. Do they hurt you? No, no, they didn't hurt me. They just tied me up. But I'm just in here for tests. We'll get them, Kelly. I, I'm, I don't care who they are, we'll get them. I don't plan to forget this one. Look, I better be gone. I'll see you at Sally's later, okay? All right, I'll be okay. there. <laughs> Who's the admirer, I guess? Hayden. You see? Oh, my God. I was so scared for you. Me too. <laughs> you look good. 
I'm okay. Thanks. Yeah. Are you as scared as we were? Oh, believe me, was I scared. So, Frank, Peter Flint is quite a guy. Guess we underestimated him, huh? He was wonderful, wasn't he? He laid his life on the line for you. Not many guys would do that. No, they wouldn't. So maybe you changed your attitude about him? A little bit? Miss Cabwell, what are you taking one of our rights for? You got a clean bill of health. Well, then take it. I'm <laughs> shame. Just take your time. Take your time. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Well, listen, that's great. Look, I told Rosa not to make any food for you because I wanted to find out from you first. But look, hey, you want quail's eggs, you want anything, you got it. Have you eaten? Yeah. Listen, Eden, I don't live at the house anymore. And I won't be spending the night there. Look, the whole family's been sweating blood, Kelly. Just, just come over for one night, okay? Look, you can all be sure I'll be safe and snug at my apartment. That's not the point. We want to take care of you. Listen, Eden, you're a dear one, but I've moved out. Not halfway, but all the way. I'm now. not talking about giving up your newfound independence. I'm just saying come home. For one night, that's all. There is more to it than you know. All right, will you just trust me, Eden? Look, I can take care of myself. I'll be at my apartment. Will you please understand? It has to be this way. I don't think I do understand. You know, now look, you're old enough to make your own decisions. I just think you're being terribly selfish. I know. Peter Flint laid his life on the line for you. Dad and Mason, they haven't slept one wink. Rosa's beside herself. Eden, please don't lay this guilt trip on me. Look, I'm not ungrateful. And I know about all the worrying that's been going on at home. You know, I really wonder if Peter, if you really deserved him. And maybe you're right. He was devoted and he was loyal to you, or so it seemed that way. And those are qualities I don't think you really respect or you understand. Maybe, maybe they're not important to you. And I think that's a big mistake. Oh, well, don't hesitate to say so. No, I won't. Because I love you. You're my sister. I'm allowed. Mason? Eden? Where's Dad? I don't know. I haven't seen him in 20 minutes or so. I guess he's home. Probably. Or maybe he's out celebrating. Eh, no, I think he'd celebrate here. Oh, I don't know. I bet she's with Santana right now. I doubt that. Oh, I think you're pretty naive. I think I'm a little more up to date than you are. Ordinarily, I think it's the other way around. After all, you are my stodgy brother. Oh, I don't know. It's not worth going into. I just don't think that Dad and Santana will be getting back together. Ever? Ever. You seem pretty sure of this. I have my reasons. So, how's baby sister? She's fine, physically. You know, I don't understand this family, Mason. What do you mean? I don't know. Everybody has secrets. We always used to be so open. Kelly has secrets, you have secrets. I, I have an open book. Certainly haven't always been like that. Yeah. I love you too, brother mine. Now, didn't you even at least like the beach? Very much. Mm -hmm. And the museum. Well, you got ogled by quite a few continental types. I did? Mm -hmm. What about you? At least I kept my top on. Well, I even surprised myself. I guess I was feeling kind of frisky, you know? Oh, I think these French people have the right idea. I do, I do. You know something? This is the first time I felt frisky since Stockman died. Maybe it was that Picasso Museum. It made me feel... Free! Yes, I know. I still think about Stockman every day, but life goes on, and I know he'd want me to be happy whenever I could. Yes, I know he would. 
Maybe I'm just enjoying being uninhibited again. Well, that's nothing for you to be ashamed of. It isn't, is it? No, of course it's not. Of course it's not. I am not going to drag myself down. No. Do you remember the, the three big smiling faces in the Picasso Museum? Mm. You see, Picasso found smiles everywhere. And that's what I want to do. That's what I'm going to do. Right? Damn right, Gina. Damn right. You know what, Gina? What? I guess I was thinking about CC too. But you've been an inspiration, I can say that. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it that the widow is giving the pep talk? Necessity. You can't bury your spirit forever. You have to look for joy and then take it wherever you can find it. For me, it's like, oh, it's like I'm starting my life all over again. Yes, I guess it is, huh? Now, Stockman was wonderful. He, he really was. But he was older and, well, I don't know, I guess... He was afraid of losing me. He uh, held the reins in pretty tight. Jealous? Oh, yes, he was jealous. Uh, <laughs> he didn't even like it if another man just looked at me. <laughs> was, um, Cece that way with you? Oh, Cece, no. Actually, Cece was very supportive of me personally, professionally, in every way. Santana, are you giving up on him? Yes, completely. I think so. Santana? <laughs> what is it, you little bundle of energy? Will you read me this book? Of course I will. There's nothing I would rather do. You don't mind, do you, Ju? No, it's great. You're going to spoil him terribly, but it's great. Just go right ahead. Have a wonderful day. Oh, Come wow. here, you little munchkin. All right, here we go. You have a seat right there. Oh. It's me. Oh. Now, and I also think there was a woman involved. What makes you say that? Well, I didn't hear her or, or see her, but I smelt perfume in the room. Did you see a woman? No, the garage was too dark. And we have a hunch that your dressmaker, Ginger Jones, was involved. Ginger? But I was at, I was at my, my dressmaker's place when all this happened. And she was just as surprised as I was when the men broke in. Was she hurt, by the way? Well, she claims to have been unconscious for a short while. Oh, and you don't believe her? I'm reserving judgment. Kelly, do you remember any other details that might help us? Did they mention where they were going, where they were coming from, that sort of thing? No, but I think they were being very careful about what they allowed me to hear. Until the end, until they were ready to kill me. She was with Joe. Peter. <laughs> Peter, what is it? What, what was funny? Oh, I, uh, I just lost my train of thought for a second. You both should rest. You've been under a lot of stress. Search is going full tilt. We'll find them. Maybe other witnesses have got a better look at them. Thanks, Mason. Thanks again, Peter. Yeah. Kelly, I'd be glad to drive you home. No, thanks, Peter. I'm going to go to my apartment. Yeah, that's what I imagined you'd say. Mason's got to drop me off. Well, then I guess I'll leave you alone. To your new life. Peter! You know how that man with the beard and the cane is still around here? What man with the beard? It's just here, just a while ago. I don't recall. Pull the elevator! You know something? What? <laughs> you are very beautiful. Uh, the lights in here are flattering. I must use pink bulbs or something. No, no. You can't duck this one. You are truly a California golden girl. Mm, give me a break. You know, there's something I can't figure out, though. What? Hey, you have to be so smart. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell me, do you, uh, do you windsurf? I know, I've never tried that. Well, that's something I could teach you. You'd love it, that is, if you like to swim. I love to swim, but, uh, the surfs out here are kind of scary. 
course. Not for a lifeguard. Well, this lifeguard has learned to respect the power of the waves. Mm. Do you um, ride horseback? Sometimes. Good. Do you like rock, jazz, country? <clears throat> I would stand in line all night for a Bruce Springsteen ticket. No, you're kidding. A passion. Yeah. Mm. Tell me this. Do you uh, sleep in pajamas? <laughs> well, um, only when I'm not hot. Mm. Well, one more question. Mm. What's a girl like you doing hanging around with a guy who's just a lonely wife guy? Because you're not. Well, the last time I looked, I was. No. I know there's more to you than just being a lifeguard. I think you're biding time. <laughs> You've had a lot to worry about. And you can't do everything at once. You've had a lot of things to do. So what is this? I tell you a few things about myself and now you're a certified therapist? No, I'm not a therapist. I just guessed a few things about you. I don't know. Well, you, um, you happen to know a little more than you should, maybe. Mm -hmm. Well, I think she broke off your engagement in a fit over Joe. I mean, that's all it was. She was excited about being involved with a dangerous man. She's growing up now. That doesn't mean she's going to come back to me. In fact, I'm not I'm quite sure she won't. Why not? Well, the truth is, Eden, it, uh, she doesn't want me. She never has. I was just someone to uh, smooth over a broken romance for her. I never stood a chance with her in my own right. Mm, Peter. I was just a fill-in. Uh, someone to keep her mind occupied while Joe was in prison. A little plaything to uh, distract her until Joe came back. But Joe's not coming back. He's out of her life forever, and Kelly knows that. It's going to take her time to adjust to it, but he's gone. Out of her life, he's dead. <laughs> oh, no, he's not. I'm sorry, what? Oh, I mean, uh, he's still in her life. She's bound to exonerate him. He still plays a very important part in her life. Yes, but without the flesh and blood man there, she's going to come around. She's human. She's going to find much better things to do with her life than this. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't know. And I don't know how to handle it anymore. Hey. And what'd you say to offend him? Nothing. He's under a lot of stress, that's all. Maybe you should let him relax and quit bending his ear so much. He saved my sister's life. That's right. And he's your sister's fiancé. Ex-fiancé. But for the record, I'd like to see the two of them get back together. Yeah, right. But just in case they don't... You're impossible. No, no, I'm... I'm possible. Your father asked me to take you home. He did. Yeah, he wants all his daughters prison and accounted for. Yeah, well, I guess he's kind of out of luck with Kelly. And me, well, I don't think I'm ready to go. So why don't you go along and I'll make sure I get right. Look, let's make a deal. Let's stop running games on each other like we just graduated from high school. Let's start acting like grown-ups. It'll be a new experience. Hey, I'm 100% mature. Mature? Oh, isn't that the stuff they spread on the fields to make the rice grow better? It's funny. Why don't you go ahead? I'll find a ride. Yeah, I know you can find a ride, but you don't need to, since I already came all the way back down here to give you one. This is wonderful. We make great progress, haven't we? Here we can argue in public and people don't think a thing about it. I wonder what they'll think it is, huh, Cruz? Newfound hostility? Or actually the truth, that we've actually been arguing for three years? At this particular moment, I don't give a damn what the people around here think. Well, maybe you do, right? Uh, you worried about what Peter might think? Is that it? Give it up, Cruz, please. If I didn't know you better... I might really believe you're flirting with Kelly's fian... ex-fiancé, as you put it. Well, I guess it's obvious that you don't know me very well. Because I was flirting with him. You are unbelievably adept at making your life and everyone else's much more difficult than it need be. And you, Cruz? You always have been and still are. 
an extremely jealous man. You going? Well, uh, yeah, evidently I'm wasting hospital bed space right now. But they say I'm all right. And I'm cleared to start my new job as a waitress tomorrow. <laughs> you a waitress? I know. It's going to be the first for the Capwells. But I just wanted to thank you again. There's no need. Peter, you saved my life. I'll never forget that. Oh, well, goodbye. with you I was just thinking about the first time I saw you really how nice you were pouring sweat if I recall right rippling muscles all tanned remember thinking you were trouble from the first minute I laid eyes on you <laughs> yeah yeah I had you pegged from the start too sweetheart spoiled and snooty do you remember the first time we met No, I don't think I do. It was a Saturday. We were thinking it was strange that a gardener should be working on a Saturday. But then, you were no ordinary gardener, were you, Cruz? You must be Pepe. Yeah. So? Monsieur Emilion was telling me that you're good with horses. The trees. Natural things. And that's why he's a rich man. It's good judgment. It's hot out here. And uh, Horses, like uh, women, act bad in the warm weather. They're the same. What are? Women and horses. No, a little different. One has uh, two legs, one has four. The one with four is the, the more advanced form of the species. A much preferable company sometimes, too, I tell you. That's sweet. Well, I'd like to tell the truth. Not too much fluff about it. Some people find it refreshing. Some people can't take it. Would you like something to drink? Some lemonade? No. Maybe you should offer some to him, though. No? Maybe I will next time. Sorry to bother you. No bother! Just don't have a lot of time to talk to rich girls about nothing better to do than make lemonade. You know, you may know a lot about horses, but you know nothing about civility or manners, do you? Nobody's perfect. That's not the first time you saw me and you know it. What do you mean? I noticed you watching me from your bedroom window several times before that. I did not. Oh, yes, you did. What are you telling me? You thought I didn't notice? I don't know what you're talking about. You don't? Mm -mm, absolutely not. <laughs> you don't have to feel weird about it. I watched you, too. What? At night, I used to turn the light on and pull down the shade. Halfway, and then you'd undress. You watched me? You bet I watched. Especially since you planned it. That would be absurd. I liked what I saw, too. Especially on those hot nights when you wouldn't even bother to wear a nightgown. You should have been arrested. Yeah, <laughs> I was. What? I was stopped dead in my tracks. I couldn't move. I used to beg for you to turn the light off so I could... Regain some of my composure. Maybe we should get something straight right now, Cruz. What's that? That if you ever did that again, I'd put your eyes out. Hello. Kelly. <laughs> oh, 
Nobody out there, I hope. No, nobody's out there. <laughs> Welcome home, my beautiful Kelly. <laughs> your father very much too you know what Brandon I'm just starting to realize I loved your grandfather very much too I can't bear to think of losing all three of you and you want to know something I won't lose you Although you see the world different than me, sometimes I can touch upon wonders that you see. I have a question. What? Why did you call yourself Pepe in France? I had my reasons. No one believed you were Pepe. <laughs> they believed it. No, they didn't. Pepe wouldn't have had a mean streak in him. He didn't look like a Pepe. Ah. Come on, Eden. As in Garden oh, of... Oh, no, please. I just wanted to know why you were called Pepe. You really want to pin me down on this? Only in a matter of speaking. <laughs> you sure about that? Quite. Too bad. Well, sweet dreams. You dumping me off? Trying to, yeah. It's rude. What's rude about it? You got home, didn't you? Nothing happened. Not yet. You looking for trouble? Me? Yeah, you. That summer you couldn't get enough of it. That wasn't my fault. You'd like to think that, huh? I know it. Eden. What? If this is the best we can do, maybe we really shouldn't see each other. Get close again. Let's never be separated, Joe. If I'm not letting you out of my sight, I can't tell you what it was like not knowing whether you were alive or not. I was going crazy. I was locked up here like some prisoner. Sally had to restrain me from running outside. I just was going nuts. I, I thought maybe you were hurt. But you know, you just made me feel like the happiest man on earth, knowing how you feel about me. That's all I can We have to find some place where we can be together, where we don't have to hide. Oh, we will. I want to be your husband. I want to be the father of our children. I want to have breakfasts and, and <laughs> dinners together. I want to, oh, I want to hail a taxi in, in, in New York City with you. And I want to share the sunsets over the Grand Canyon. I want to grow old with you be right beside you but you know our spirits are going to grow old because we're going to be in love that's right and most of all i want you right here your soul and mine suspended in time blended perfectly and I'm looking for work. Good luck. Okay. I've been right at the bottom lots of times, but I just pick myself up and start all over again. And you do the same thing, Antonio. There's no giving up. <laughs> Anxious advice, Ginger. 
Look, you have lots going for you. You're a hero, you're gonna marry into a fortune. Don't think you won't. That little Catwell girl's imprinted on you just like a baby ducks around their mother. You saved her life. She's gonna follow you to the ends of the earth, my dear. I know her type. Always looking for a hero. Now you're her hero. <laughs> Why don't you tell her that, Ginger? I don't have to, sweetheart. She knows it already. Just a matter of time and she'll be back in your arms. But where will I be, huh? Antonio? Now, I was thinking that you might need a dressmaker again. Don't you think so? She needs a couple hundred more dresses at least, doesn't she? And it just so happens I'm looking for a job. Maybe I could even sew her a wedding dress. You're disgusting. There's a lot about Peter you don't know. What are you saying? I think that that he might have been involved in the kidnap. Involved? Mm -hmm. Joe, he was the one who saved my life. That's what it looked like. He could have very easily staged it to look that way. What do you mean? I mean it's a good possibility that the whole thing, the shootout, the garage, all of that could have been staged. Joe, what are you saying? Why? Because he's involved with people who do things like that. I think that he's involved with, well, I don't know what you would call it, I guess that he has a working relationship with Ginger Jones. My dressmaker? Yeah. She's a criminal record, by the way. Ask Mason. You, you've got to be kidding. No. Ginger Jones? Uh-huh. She... <laughs> I saw her once at Peter's apartment. She and a couple of thugs held a gun on me. Joe! Yeah, no, see, I wouldn't put anything past him, include kidnapping you. But uh, Peter and Ginger barely know each other. Guess again. Look, he was a teacher, a physics teacher at Lyman Prep. How in the world could he be involved with those kind of people? You don't want to know the answers. Well, maybe not, but I need to know. All right. Peter has a lot more in his past than just being a physics teacher. I guess when he was very young, he was taken in by a woman, Ginger. And she took in a lot of young men and trained them to be male whores. What? Yeah. Peter worked for Ginger in Miami and a lot of other cities. She was his pimp. Now, the, uh, the point of that story... Yes? ...was, um... It is that we both probably need to get some sleep. <laughs> I can't even remember what the point of that story was, but I'm sure it had a point. I can't believe we have been up all night. <laughs> Do you know what time it is? I don't care. Eight o'clock in the morning. You don't say. Mm -hmm. Goodness gracious, you know, she is a bad girl. <clears throat> I'm not a bad girl. <laughs> hey, what about me? Oh, what about mm. you? Mm. Had a wonderful evening. Me too. You know, you're really something. Mm. I figured once I told you all that stuff, you'd... What? I don't know, just get the hell away from me and stay away. That is ridiculous. How come you're still around? Because I believe in you. Why? Because you're... you. Because you have regrets. Because you're smart. Mm. And because you have a great spirit for things. That means a lot to me. It means a lot to me that you trust me. I do. More and more. I love your cheekbones. <laughs> and I love your eyes. And your wavy hair. Mm. You know, I think you better get some sleep. <clears throat> mm -hmm. You should too. I will. Don't worry. Good night. <laughs> Good morning. Mm. Yes. Santana, it's Mason. Mason? Yes, how, how are you? Oh, fine. Really? Mm -hmm. Yes, how are you? Well, I'm great, but you don't sound too chipper. No, I'm fine, really. I just got a lot of sun today, that's all. Don't they have those uh, big umbrellas on the beaches there? Yes, they have them. And they sell suntan lotion? Yes, there's all kinds around. I've just been stupid. <laughs> like 
clarify anything? It certainly does. How's the French food? I haven't had a big appetite. Oh, that's a shame. Aren't it the best cooking in the world? Mm, I guess so. Well, I, um, was just thinking of you. Oh, how's, how's Gina? She's great. Landed a decorating contract with her yet? No, not yet. Well, if she has any sense, you will. Mason, thank you. Um, you know, it was very nice of you to call. Sure. You be well, Santana. Bye. Bye. Yes, this is Mason Capwell. I'd like to uh, book a flight to Nice uh, immediately, if that's possible. Uh huh. Next flight out. Yeah, you opened your mouth one too many times, Ginger. You remember the day that Joe Perkins and I came into my apartment and you were there and you started spouting off about me being Antonio and all that stuff, talking about my past. Which past do you mean, Antonio? Oh, which past do you think, Ginger? The one that Kelly should know about. <laughs> oh, that past. So what? Joe Perkins is dead. And no one else knows. You know, I can't figure out what's wrong with you. <laughs> you're a big hero. You oh, yeah. saved Kelly's life. <laughs> and you're in a lousy mood anyway. Mm. What do you want out of life? No, what is it, Antonio? Hmm? What is it? Any minute now, Kelly Capwell is going to come dashing through that door into your arms. <laughs> Matter of hours, I guarantee you. Yes, yeah, sure. <laughs> well, right. All right, then. What's so funny? I really want to know. Yes, I really would like to know. <laughs> Joe Perkins isn't dead. Is this your idea of a joke? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, it's Joe Perkins' idea of a joke. <laughs> you remember when he was uh, uh, mysteriously lost at sea? <laughs> Only he somehow managed to show up in Kelly Capwell's hospital room in a disguise. Yeah, yeah. Mustache and beard, wig on the cane. <laughs> Only his wig slipped off, and I just happened to recognize him. I don't believe that. No. Oh, you bet. I can't. <laughs> Ginger, I think Kelly and I need to talk. Oh, well, excuse me. I was, I was leaving anyway. Why don't you wait outside? I'll do that. Well, you look great. Yeah, I'm fine. I wanted to thank you again, Peter. Oh, you don't have to do that, Kelly. <laughs> no. No, I see you've changed. Your, your feelings have. Uh, so... Go out there and have a good time. Enjoy the day. You know, it is over with us, Peter. Oh, yeah, I know. I know that. Oh, well, I know. It's uh, not what matters to me, though. What matters to me is, is that you're happy. You know, I, I guess there's about 10 million guys out there that would uh, just about drop dead for you. And I'm sure there's at least one that you would feel the same way about, isn't there? I mean, go ahead. Uh, get married. Then you could have some kids, have some dogs, a few frogs. And what about you? Oh, me? Don't worry about me. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm a hero now, you know? Yeah. I mean, there, there's women just crawling out of the woodwork for me now. You don't have to worry about me. I can, I can take care of myself. No, I know you can. <laughs> What's important to me, Kelly, is... You go and do whatever it is that you have to do. Thank you, Peter. You've been very understanding. Oh, you're welcome. And thanks for bringing a little happiness into my life. Goodbye, Peter. Bye, Kelly. Send Ginger back in now. Well, did you see that? See what? 
Boy, Kelly was looking at us. I can't stop thinking about Joe Perkins. I can't believe that he's still alive. Oh, he's alive? Of course he's alive. Not only that, he's told Kelly about you, me, everything. How do you know that? But didn't you see the look on her face? The way she looked at you, the way she looked at me. The guy was a piece of dirt. A piece of trash piling up on the street. Listen, I can't, I can't tell you anything about that right now. Your charm. Oh, Antonio. You've always been the one who could turn on the charm. I know that look. You're up to something, aren't you? You know, something just occurred to me. I know. It's not really a crime, is it, to, to kill a dead man? I, I mean, a man who's already dead, who, who's already been legally declared dead. Who would miss him? Who, who would know he's dead? Who would search for him? What are you thinking? Huh? Oh, you know, there's just a few loose ends out there, kind of, kind of dangling in the breeze. And all they need to be is tied up. And who would do that? Who? Who would tie them up? Who would know, Ginger? Who would know who, uh, whoever killed a dead?